being on, on the C, you can play a long line, which is ascending. One, flat seven, six, flat six, five, four, three, two, one. You can play this ascending. One, three, four, flat five, five, six, flat seven, seven, one. You can change between the ascending and descending ones. This one is actually the ascending one, but you start from an octave above and you drop from one to six. You can ascend it once more. So what I recommend you to actually practice on is take the ascending and descending blocks and and then just string them together and and vary one one thing you can also do which Kenny Hollings shows in his bass video is an organ teacher very good one is when when you play you can always throw that one in it's one flat three two flat two one can one one more possibility is to go from the one to the flat seven six flat seven seven one and you can all always throw in one three uh, one five with leading notes one flat five five seven one or you can lead it in half step above one flat six five flat two one So by just combining these simple blocks and, and practicing them un until they're an integral part of you in conjunction with the metronome, you should have yourself a, s a, s a solid set of bass lines. An organ player will normally play a little less, um, unless you're Joey De Francesco or Groove Holmes, you'll, you'll play a less complicated bass line when you're soloing, when you're comping, you can focus more on, on being fancy on, on the bass. Uh, the final parts of a C blues is, is the turnaround, that would be the... Which I will normally play 1, flat 7, 6, flat 3, 2, flat 5, 5, seven or flat two So the, the, there's not too much difference between what I actually do, do on, on the bass and the bass lines I, I play on the organ. A distinct advantage that you have as an organ player is that when you get an idea, an, an, an harmonic idea, and, and you want to go something com completely different and new way, 
you don't have to shout at the bass player and 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 think I can't do this because the bass player does not know what I want to do since you are the keyboardist and the bass player at the same time uh, Jimmy Smith Jack McDuff and, and all the jazz cats were actually also throwing in a ghost note on the bass pedals they would be sitting and, and tapping a CB flat uh, one, one octave from, from lowest C they would basically just sit and tap very short uh, the Hammond organ is a bit more responsive since it's purely electromechanical and this is something I, I hope the Nord guy fixes uh, so you have an even better thump in the bass uh, a Hammond organ played will, will probably just, especially if it's worn out with clear contacts, it's, it'll go thump 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 and if you add that, I'll, I'll exaggerate it a bit, on, on top of your bass playing, you get a better attack. No attack. Attack. Attack, attack, especially if you've got a full, I've got a Studio Logic 17 keys foot pedal board which I've modified, I, I actually took off the, the white wooden overlays and made them about 30 centimeters long instead, screwed on new ones so I can play to uh, toe and heel. It's a, it's a way to cheaply get a almost a full length keyboard. There's a Viscount one which is very price worthy. It's, it's about a thousand euros MIDI one and I think if you, if you want to constantly play the thump 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 you need a full length uh, keyboard, a uh, foot pedal keyboard because the, the pedals are stiffer on those than on the smaller ones so you can actually rest your foot on it. It's, it's, it's very tiring to, to sit for an hour lifting your foot but, but on, a, on a real one you can have your foot on resting on, on the footrest and, and just tap, tap with your toe and, and, and you can vary it quite, quite a lot to, to make it easier. So then, a full length 12 bar jazz blues, an, an example, bass only, would probably be something like this. One, two, three, four. Thank you. 